Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the ChessWebsite.com, and today kicked off a very important tournament of the year, the Candidates Tournament. The winner of this tournament will go on to face Magnus Carlsen in November for the World Championship. Now we're going to take a little bit of time just to go over who qualified for the Candidates Tournament so y'all know all the competitors because it is such a high profile tournament. The first person is going to be Vishian Nan. He qualified because he lost to Magnus Carlsen in the 2014 World Championship. 2015, we did not have a World Championship. So that makes this tournament even more important uh, because Magnus Carlsen's kind of been hanging out there for two years waiting for someone to battle him in November. Uh, so Vishian Nan, because he lost, he is the first competitor in this tournament. The next two are going to be the top two finishers from the 2015 Chess World Cup. Uh, those are Sergei Karhakin and Peter Svidler, two Russian grandmasters, both very good players, excited to see them in this tournament. The next two are going to be the top two finishers from the 2014-2015 uh, Chess Grand Prix. We've been covering that uh, series of tournaments over the past two years, uh, and the top two finishers were Fabiano Carjuana uh, and Nakamura, two American grandmasters, so excited to see a couple Americans in there. The next two were the highest rated players uh, that played in either the World Cup or the Grand Prix. Those players are Topolov and Anish Jiri. Uh, so excited to see those players in here. And then lastly, there's a wild card. Uh, the nomination by the organizers. Uh, they go out and kind of choose someone, uh, and they chose Levan Aronian, an extremely talented player, always does well in these type of tournaments. So uh, those are the eight players in this tournament. It's a, it's about 20 days. So uh, from March 10th, we, we kind of had the inaugural kickoff with the opening ceremonies. Today, March 11th, we had round one. This is going to go till March 30th. Uh, each player will play each of their opponents twice. They'll play one is white and one is black. So this will be a 14 uh, round tournament. There's going to be a lot of chess played. We're going to cover as much as possible. Uh, so make sure you check out both on YouTube, the channel, uh, and then on the website as well. The chesswebsite.com will have uh, some extended coverage on there as well. But going to be an exciting tournament. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and kick off. Uh, what better way to, to kick off round one than Vishianan, who won this tournament's the previous year, in 2014, uh, he won and went on to, to play Magnus Carlsen, ended up losing. But he is now back uh, to revenge uh, you know, his world championship. And so he's going to be facing off against Topolov, playing the black pieces. Uh, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. Vishyanan decided to start with pawn to e4, something we don't see from him very often. d4 is almost always his go-to play on the first move, but uh, pawn to e4, switching things up a little bit. Pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop here to b5, getting into the Rai Lopez. And the knight 2f6, the, the Berlin defense. And this defense, we've just seen more and more over the past year and a half, to be honest. So no surprise here from Topolov to go ahead and play knight here to f6. What was a little bit interesting is the pawn here to d3, the anti-Berlin defense, if you will. Uh, usually we're kind of seeing that castle on the king's side, knight taking here on e4, and then pawn up here to d4. We don't see that. Instead, we see just a pawn here to a d3, a bishop here to c5, a castle on the king side, pawn here to d6, just solidifying the pawn chain here, and then pawn to c3 with every intention of pushing forward here with a pawn to d4. Now we see black castle on the king side, knight here to d2, and then black has a few options. He could be pretty passive uh, and just kind of stay back, or he could be pretty aggressive. So his two options are knight here to e7, uh, which is to kind of hang back right here. As you can see, the knight's not even coming here to d5 or f5 anytime soon. Uh, so he has that option, or he could play bishop here to e6, get his light square bishop involved into the action, try to control the center of the board a little bit more. Uh, decides to go and play knight here to e7. Not my favorite move. Uh, I definitely wish he had played a little bit more aggressive. Uh, now Vishianon plays pawn here to d4, uh, and there's no real defense that Black has from this, so he just kind of has to allow Vishianon to go ahead and take this. So uh, pawn takes here, pawn takes back here on d4, and then bishop back here on b6. Now this is a little bit different. If we were to see Instead of knight coming back here to e7, bishop here to e6, uh, now Vishinon tries to try that 
pawn here to d4. We see the capture here, but then after the knight takes, because the knight's there on c6, attacking and defending the square here on d4, uh, white can't really do anything because the bishop is also defending the square as well. So just a very different approach is how uh, you know Sopolov wants to play in the Berlin defense. But uh, in the game, knight here to e7, uh, and then we do see the exchange on board, and then bishop back here to b6. Rook here to e1, just centralizing, defending this pawn here on e4 as it pushes forward. Uh, bishop here to g4, just getting light square bishop involved into the game pawn here to h4 kicking the bishop back and then pawn to a4 and this is a novelty uh, for white this is something that we don't usually see uh, and so th this kind of tells me that vichy anon has prepared something special for this tournament i don't always feel like vichy anon is the best player at the tournaments he plays in, but I always do feel like he is the most prepared. He's the most methodical as how, as far as how he approaches his matches, especially depending on who his opponent is, uh, how we'll go into preparation for that. And so, uh, pawn here to a4. I don't know if he necessarily just looked at the Berlin defense because he's been playing against it so often, especially in his matches against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he just saw maybe something specific when he was white. If he kind of played that pawn here to d3, maybe got to this exact position and he thought pawn here to a4 is not really seen, but he thought it was just an improvement over what's been out there before. Uh, all in all, though, uh, pawn here to a4, he played it confidently, so it definitely seems like he, he knew what he was doing. Pawn here to a6, forcing the bishop at. The bishop can really come to a couple places. Bishop here to e2 if he wants to kind of stop that pin down on the knights on f3. Uh, or could just bring it back here to f1. That's what he decides to do. A rook here to e8, just centralizing right here, trying to control the semi-open file. A pawn here to a5, just forcing the bishop back here to a7. And this does kind of lock this bishop out right now. The bishop can't come here to b6, can't come here to c5 because of these pawns. So later on, uh, Topolov definitely wants to kind of break open the center of the board so his dark square bishop can control a little bit more of the game. Queen here to b3. As you look at both sides, white's really doing a good job of being aggressive on board. Controls the center of the board. Um... You know, he has both of his bishops can easily get involved into the action. Uh, Black's kind of cramped on board. Uh, the light square bishop over here isn't doing too much. It's it's pinning down a knight to nothing right now. Uh, both of these knights aren't really doing too much. They, they can't really get involved into the game. Uh, they're not really protecting their own pawns in the center. Uh, you know, this queen right now is kind of blocked off. This bishop here on a 7 is not doing too much. So uh, Vishidon doing a good job. Uh, you know, Topolov kind of just hanging back, trying to trying to find if he can find an open opening on board. So let's go and play knight here to c6, uh, attacking this pawn here on d4. So Vishinan just goes, decides to go ahead and push it forward with pawn here to d5, uh, forcing the knight to come down here to d4 almost. Uh, and then the capture, bishop here to d4, uh, and then the queen takes here on b7. And this is one of those moves that afterwards they asked Vishinan about and kind of said, hey, you know, Toplov just gave you this pawn here on b7. Did you ever think about not taking it? He said, yeah, uh, you know, I considered queen here to b4, uh, bishop here to c5, potentially queen here to, to, to c4, knight here to d7. He just didn't feel like he liked his pieces. He thought they would be somewhat silly looking if he didn't take uh, here on a b7. So all in all, uh, although he wasn't super happy about it, he, he said, uh, decided to go ahead and take with his queen here on a b7. Topolov was able to get compensation back for that pawn, so he plays knight here to d7. Very important move uh, because it's a pseudo way to protect this pawn here on a6. Right now, the bishop before that could have just come here to a6, being protected by the queen right here. Uh, but white can no longer do that because of knight here to c5. So uh, knight here to d7, a very important move for Topolov. Uh, after knight here to d7, uh, we see the knight come up here to d4. Now the knight come down here to c5, uh, queen here to c6, and then knight down here to b3. And I, th I think Topolov kind of gave up some of his momentum that he had. Uh, he kind of has his opponent's queen stuck up here where it's not really adding a lot of value on board. He has a pretty aggressive uh, attacks that he can do. He has two different options that I really like. The first one is just going all out. Bishop taking here on f2, uh, you know, after... Vishyanon takes here on f2. The queen can come down, check. We could see the knight to come in board, knight to e4, check. Uh, after the rook takes, the queen captures here. Um, although he gave up a minor piece, he has a very strong attack on board. And Topolov's going to have a, a really fun time just chasing Vishyanon all over the board. So that's one option. Another option on board uh, is just playing pawn here to f6. 
Uh, then we have bishop here to e3 potentially. We see an exchange on board. A rook here to e7, uh, getting ready for the bishop to come back here to e8, attacking that queen. There's not a lot of great squares for this queen to go to. This knight's being protected by the pawn. Uh, if he wants to kind of escape this way, he's going along in those light square diagonal uh, squares where this bishop would be attacking. So uh, all in all, I really like this attack. Toplov decided to go for a different path. Um, and instead of either of those, he plays knight here to b3. Uh, and then rook here to b1. And then he plays a knight takes here on c1. Another move that I, I just really don't like. I, I think even in, in this position, it's fine. Uh, but this dark short bishop right now is not doing a whole lot. Uh, I think even just busting things open with pawn here to f5. Uh, it's a way for Topolov to be very aggressive. Where he knows his opponent's does not have all of his pieces kind of unified right now, and this kind of breaks it open. He can get his rook very involved into the game, putting a lot of pressure on this e-file. He can easily get his queen involved into the game if he wants to. He still has this bishop eyeing down on the f2 square. So uh, all in all, I do think he made a big mistake here, knight taking here on c1, uh, and then the rook recaptures, and then rook over here to b8 attacking this pawn right here. Uh, somewhat being held down uh, by the knight, but does need some added protection since... We have the bishop and the rook both attacking uh, that square. But decides to go ahead and gobble up material first. Queen here to a6. Now the queen's going to come down here to h4. Uh, threatening mate right here. So rook here to c2. Both defending the square here on f2. And then also defending the square here on b2, which we talked about. So Blav now comes down to e4, capturing material. That's going to come back here to e3. Queen back here to d8. Uh, queen centralizing here to uh, c4. Does have a pass pawn now here on the a file. Uh, bishop here to uh, g6, just trying to defend some pieces. Bishop here to d3. Wasn't really doing too much on f1, so does need to make sure it gets involved into the action. A uh, rook here to f4. And then the bishop takes here on g6. I think Vichy Anon uh, definitely missed an opportunity here. Uh, you know, Topolov had kind of the advantage, and then he kind of squandered it a little bit as he kind of just gave up his knight, gave up kind of his attack here. Uh, Vichy Anon, on the other hand, he kind of has the advantage. He could have easily played pawn here to g3. And this is really difficult for Topolov to deal with. The queen could come down here to g5, uh, trying to hold on to that so the pawn can't take here. But just the queen comes up here, capture here on c7, rook over here on f8, just trying to hold down material right here. Now after the exchange, this is going to be good for Vichy Anon. In the game, he decided to go ahead and start with uh, the bishop taking here on g6, which in the worst move, I just think there was a slight improvement with pawn here to g3 first. After the pawn takes, now we're going to see pawn here to g3, Rook here to e4, uh, attacking the knights. Pawn up here to a6. Anytime you have a, a pass pawn, you should always be looking to push that pawn. And now it does have protection from this queen here on c4. Queen here to e8, trying just to hold control of the center of the board. Uh, this e file is very important. Uh, it is the open file in the center. Uh, so definitely want to have the most powerful pieces, queens and rooks, involved into the action. Rook over here to uh, e2, just kind of double barreling here. Uh, bishop here to b6, nice little outpost for the bishop and also opening up the door for a discovered attack on this queen here on c4. So the queen has to move, still wants to make sure it's holding down the fort, uh, protecting this pawn here on a6. And now rook over here to a8. So uh, attacking this pawn uh, with the, the rook, Vishinon does have the queen here on d3. Now he plays king here to g2. And this is another opportunity where I think Vishinon could have improved. Uh, you know, pawn here to b4 with the next move looking of pawn here to b5 would be very difficult for Topolov to deal with. Uh, now, not sure how long he kind of analyzed this. Um, hopefully he would have seen it after rook taking here on b4, which is kind of the, the big threat. Uh, that White has of playing pawn here to b4. The knight here to c2 is just deadly. Uh, Topolov could just essentially resign in this position, uh, attacking both the rook uh, and a discovered attack on the queen here on e8. So uh, the pawn was protected, and then he could have just pushed forward with pawn here to b5. Uh, he didn't really potentially see that. Uh, he definitely didn't play. They played king here to a g2. Now queen coming down here to a4, uh, putting more pressure on the pawn here on a6. Uh, now pawn here to b3, not really doing what it really needs to. Uh, rook here to d4, Topolov says, hey, I'll go ahead and trade off pieces uh, if you want to. Uh, Vishinon decides, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, knight here to 
c4, uh, and then rook captures here on a6, pawn up here to a5, uh, bishop here to a d4, rook up here to e8, uh, now the king over here to h7. Uh, if you kind of look on board now, though, we have five pawns to five pawns. So while Vishyanan kind of had the advantage, uh, you can see both sides, they kind of go from the advantage to... Uh, you know, back to equal, and then Vishyanan kind of had almost a, a really big advantage and then kind of gave it back a little bit. So uh, definitely has maybe the, the more aggressive play right now with both of, the, both of his rooks uh, kind of teamed up right now, attacking his opponent's king side of the board. Uh, but I do think he, he missed an opportunity to expand his lead that he already had going into the end game. Rook here to c3. Knight here to d2, uh, getting ready to play knight here to e4. And, and Toplov really does not want the knight to come here on e4. It's just too hard to stop. Uh, this controls so much of the board over here on the king side. Uh, it's almost a, a certain play that you have to play pawn here to f5, just kind of stopping that. If you can stop the knight from really getting involved, uh, you can kind of mitigate the risk of these rooks over here. Uh, instead, he decides to play rook here to c2, uh, probably the biggest blunder that he had in the game, although they're, ma they're all making somewhat small errors throughout. Uh, rook here to, to c2 is, is somewhat unacceptable. Uh, knight here to e4, uh, and there's no way to really stop it now. Uh, it's got a great attack that he has. Uh, pawn here to f6. Doesn't do anything uh, for the defense here. Pawn here to h4. Uh, the rook takes here on a5. Uh, and then, so black is up a material. Uh, but white just has so much over here on the king side of the board. Uh, rook here to f7. Pawn here to g5. Just trying to stop the attack as much as possible. A pawn here to h5. Rook over here to f2. Uh, we do see an exchange on board. Uh, and that's going to be fine. Decides to go ahead and just come up here to h3. Uh, so now we have two rooks versus a rook and a bishop. Uh, and then after the king takes, we see pawn here to f5. Kind of a, a last effort now. Uh, and then rook to f5. And Topolov in this position resigns on board. So congratulations to Vishyanan. Uh, the rest of the games today all tied out. Uh, and so we have Topolov at the bottom with zero points. Vishyanan with one and everyone else with half a point. So uh, could not have started any better for Vishyanan. So I'll, I know he's got a ton of support out there. Uh, so congratulations to him. Really excited to see kind of how he plays out uh, in this tournament. There's a, a lot of young chess players that I know a lot of people, myself included, to be honest, are, are kind of hoping they can make a splash. Um, you know, having Madness Carlson play someone else under 25 would be pretty cool. Uh, but Vishinan, you can never count him out. Uh, he's very methodical in what he does and starting out with a, a victory um, bodes very well for him and his supporters. So congratulations. Really looking forward to the next three weeks of chess. Hopefully you guys are uh, excited. If you didn't know about this tournament, Get excited because there's going to be some awesome chess. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.